If this absolute embodiment of male femininity dares to talk bad about my wife Brie Larson, I will not be pleased. You know how everyone's been saying that Marvel's kind of fallen off? The yes. quality of its shows and even its movies has just been dwindling to a point where it's not really exciting to see them anymore and they're... I don't know. I don't think anyone needs to tell me that. I kind of look in the horizon and I can already see it happening. Kind of stinky. Whoo-wee! Wait until you see the Marvels. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. I mean this with no exaggeration. The Marvels is the MCU's messiest movie to date. And it's not even close. Nice. I actually can't even believe the movie released in its current state. It almost feels like this is internal sabotage from someone on the inside trying to sink the MC. He's saying that because they try to delay it, and they delayed it like three times or something. This is a movie that we should have gotten like a year or two ago or something like that. It's pretty insane, honestly. They tried to reshoot it. They tried to save it. And at the end, they just said, no, nah, let's, let's just release it. And hope for the best. ...to you and make it go even lower, because it's like nobody even bothered to watch what they were putting out there. I really thought Ant-Man Quantumania would probably be the worst modern Marvel movie we'd ever get. How wrong I was. It's like the- Wasp Man Morbin time was not great. In fact, it made my eyes bleed. No, I'm serious. The visuals in that thing were just so painful. All that Disney now does at days is just CGI, and if something seems bad, just CGI more on top. Something still seems bad? Well, add a bunch of bright colors and strange shapes that make your brain explode when you're watching them for too long. That's their solution to problems. They took every single criticism that's ever been thrown against the MCU and said, Oh, you thought that was bad? Watch this. And then did all of it ten no. times worse. It feels as though they shot four different films, and then took some elements from each one, haphazardly threw them all together into this witch's cauldron here. That's because they did. That's because they did. At the start, the Marvels were, was supposed to be Brie Larson, Captain Marvel 2. And then it was made into something else, then they wanted something else again. Okay. It's no wonder uh, someone is looking at that and saying, yeah, this feels like four different movies. Because it is. It is unironically four intended different movies cobbled together like some Frankenstein creation and then just released upon the world. You're bubbling over into this fucking potion that induces a headache in all of the spectators. This movie is fundamentally like four action sequences that are loosely strung together with the worst narrative the MCU's ever had because it doesn't even try to develop the characters or their relationships. That's good. I'm gonna go ahead and get my only compliment. As I said previously, if your character is perfect, flawless, and without weakness, you don't need a personality for that because it's already per perfect and flawless. What's a personality gonna add to a character? Oh, sounds like a waste of time. ...about this movie out of the way right now. I've never seen the Miss Marvel show, so this movie was my introduction to Miss Marvel, and she is... Miss Marvel is Kamala Khan, by the way, I think. And yes, that show exists. Very few people know about it, and those who know usually don't speak of it because it was so bad... Even YouTube decided to just uh, s sign an unwritten agreement that no one's gonna bring up its existence because that's how sad it is. Great. Both the actress playing Miss Marvel and even the character I think has so much potential in the universe. She is the only good thing about this movie. She fucking kills it. Miss Marvel is the only thing this movie does well. But it's not nearly enough- Oh no, he's actually not talking about the Kamala King in that case? I'm not even sure. ...to save it, or even make this worth watching. It doesn't redeem the 150 minutes that get flushed down the shitter. So let's go ahead and dive in. The biggest mistake this movie makes is with its villain. The most forgettable villain in MCU history. The most underdeveloped villain. Female Thanos. ...in MCU history. I don't know how we're in 2023 with like fucking 15 years worth of MCU movies and a big criticism was underdeveloped villains in some of the movies and somehow 
this deep into the game, phase fucking five here, they deliver the worst villain they've ever had. I can't even remember her name. I have to keep looking it up, and then I still forget it. That's how forgettable she Female is. Female Thanos. Name is Danver. I looked it up again. Darbin. Her name is Darbin. Fundamentally, she is like Ronin if Ronin was written in five minutes. Like... Female Thanos. All she does is she creates some... Also, Marvin, uh, also that character was written in five minutes. I did not like it in the movies. Portals that suck things up occasionally. And that's it. Spoilers, I'll tell you her motivation, and it's only explained in a couple of lines of dialogue. Instead of showing you, they just tell you. It really does feel like a lot of this was AI generated at the last possible second. I'm just gonna fucking say it. Basically, <laughs> Captain Marvel True. made a decision that had a huge effect on the Kree and caused a lot of problems for them. Darbin, being one of the Kree, will do anything to try and save them. She hates Captain Marvel and thus wants to take things from her in order to help save the Kree, basically. And since this is- Did that make sense? No, it didn't. But that's not really surprising now, is it? It's only explained in a few lines of dialogue that feel almost like throwaway lines. There's no actual emotional investment here. Since they don't bother to flesh out Darbin at all, she becomes kind of like this villain caricature. This cartoonishly evil presence that's evil for the sake of being nasty. Yeah. And even when- Dar Okay, okay. Now here's the kicker. Is she still a better villain than King the defeated like 15 times already, but is the ultimate villain in Thanos' real, real replacement? Is she still better than King the Conqueror? That's a hard question to answer, because maybe she is. I mean, King's an absolute joke at this point, not gonna lie. Now, there are some funny parts and bits and some good bits, but King as a, here, uh, as a villain just... It sucks. He sucks. Darbin and Captain Marvel are on screen together. There's still no emotional weight to anything that happens because they're speed running through shit and barely even attempting to. The reality is Captain Marvel probably doesn't even know who uh, uh, Ta Thanos 2.0 is. It makes something cohesive. But she's not really a big threat because they make it clear early on that the only reason she's not defeated easily by Captain Marvel is because. The big gimmick of the movie keeps happening where they switch places when they use their powers. So, Miss Marvel even says, like, I know you could absolutely just fucking clobber her if we would stop switching places, and I'm sorry about that. And she's right, because the main villain isn't very strong. And in fact, every time they meet her, they pretty much do defeat her until she just miraculously pulls out, like, a big force blast that opens up that portal at the last possible second. But even aside from just the super weak villain, this movie is tonally all over the place. The vast majority of the film doesn't take itself seriously. It's mainly like a Thor love and thought. It does. That's the scary part. It actually does take itself seriously. And you think Thor love and thunder didn't take itself seriously? Are you kidding me? When there's a female lead, everything is serious. Okay? This movie, 100%, was fully taking itself serious. Only those people are so inept at making good movies that they you know, botch that part up and it looks like a joke at some points, but you know, still. Thunder, fucking flat comedy where almost none of the jokes are landing. The worst offender is actually Nick Fury. Nick Fury has a prominent role here, but he's just literally a clown. I don't think he has a single line of dialogue in this- Yeah, he has been a clown for quite some time now. There, there's this neat little thing called secret wars. <laughs> When Nick Fury is like, green pussy, yeah, I, 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 I'm in, I'm in, yeah, I'm, yeah, let's, let's do it for some, some green booty, makes sense. Movie that isn't a joke or leading into a punchline, even when the stakes are super high, like, oh, we might, you know, lose the world here if Darbin's plan goes correctly. And Stop even when he's about to fucking die, <laughs> he's making jokes the entire time. What happened to this character? It's not even consistent with the Nick Fury that we know, or the one that was in Secret uh, Secret Invasion. Oh yeah, Secret Invasion, I'm sorry. It was so good I forgot the name. Finish, because I didn't really like it that much. Obviously. But this is not the same character. They like replaced him with a, a goofball. Like, like I don't understand what even happened here. Almost every single scene outside of action is all over the place. 
it wants to be like this wacky, quirky, zany comedy. And then sometimes it wants to be like a drama. And then sometimes it wants to be more action focused. It's at its best when it's doing action. I think some of the action scenes are pretty decent. Though really? there are moments here where you can really feel the tears from the CGI artists that have to work on this. They are just overworked. The, the VFX department at Marvel... Like, I, I can feel their pain through some of these scenes. because The VFX department is the only mo uh, department left in Marvel at this point. Their movies are almost 100% just CGI, if you did not know, by the way. It's just everything's done in front of a green screen. It's kind of insane. A lot of them feel as though they didn't have time to actually finish it. I don't hold it against them. It's just the Marvel pipeline where they're constantly just fucking pumping shit out as quickly as possible without a care in the world. But there are some action sequences that look alarmingly rough in the CGI department. But for the most part, the action is pretty okay. Like, it's pretty fun. Especially, like, the final fight is interesting, I guess. But it, it <laughs> doesn't really I matter guess. that much because there's not a real <laughs> movie around it. You're basically just watching, like, a montage of some decent action moments, and, and that's it. So, anyway, back to what I was saying. In between these action sequences, when it's trying to do a bunch of different things, it fails on all fronts. Let me give you an example. So there's a planet they visit, okay. and it's a planet that means a lot to Captain Marvel. Okay. And the inhabitants of that world Why, though? only communicate through song. If you just speak, they can't understand you. It basically has to be a musical. And I think it is the most insufferable sequence or series of scenes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Singing in a Marvel movie does sound quite a bit bad, not gonna lie, true. The MCU's ever had. It just doesn't make any sense. Like... If this was a Rick and Morty sketch, fine. Like, this feels like it'd fit right at home in some kind of Saturday morning cartoon special as, like, a joke. But this comes in the middle of the film where things are getting desperate. Where the villain's <laughs> succeeding and, like, this is a planet Captain Marvel really cares about and it's about to get fucked in the ass. And it's like, okay, why are we having, like, a musical here about this and not taking anything seriously? And even when... So, how do they communicate through writing, though? When they fail to protect it... Ten seconds later, Captain Marvel's joking! Like, this is a place she called home five minutes ago. She fucking fails to protect it from Darbin, and she immediately just starts joking about it. And then the next scene, pretty much, they go into this whole cat subplot. This whole side quest with cats, and Nick Fury, and cats. Like, it's all over the place. You can't Obviously. take it seriously if the movie itself doesn't take it seriously and isn't actually held together by anything. It, but it's supposed to be serious. You don't understand. It's supposed to be serious, dramatic, and all of those things. He just doesn't understand this is what constitutes serious and deep for these people. There's, there's no excuse, yeah, but... <laughs> It is serious. That's what makes it funny. That's what makes it really funny. The fact that this uh, none of this is a joke. All of this is a is supposed to be serious and you know deep and meaningful. Anything at all. There's no real substance here. The only time this movie even comes close to making an emotional beat work is between Captain Marvel and Monica Rambeau. They have a relationship that is loosely explored and only one time successfully gets across the weight of it. And that's through this sequence where they're seeing each other's memories. They all kind of tap into this thing that's showing memories, and they do a good job of setting up Captain Marvel and Monica there. Do but outside they? of that, anytime they try and explore that, they don't give it any real chance. Like, it just falls flat again. They have one good emotional scene with that, and then completely forgot how to do it appropriately because they were too busy focusing on lame humor. And going into the film, I imagine a lot of you think that the switching of places is going to be integral to the plot. No. It's really not. <laughs> like, it's used occasionally, Obviously. but it doesn't even follow its own rules for the switching sometimes. Like, they forget to switch. It's supposed to be when they, like, use their powers at the same time they switch. But there's multiple scenes where they both, or all three of them, really, will use their powers at pretty much the same time and not switch. It's like they forgot that that gimmick was even present sometimes. And it doesn't really play a role in the narrative outside of... Well, if you make it too confusing for the average p person that's gonna watch the models, yeah, it's not gonna work. The people who unironically like the models will not be able to follow too, too complicated things. Like, let's be completely real here, okay? Explaining why Darbin just can't be easily defeated by Captain Marvel. So while I think the concept could have been fun to explore, like, 
these three characters need to work together in order to overcome an overwhelmingly powerful enemy and somehow use this to their advantage, the ability to switch places. Somehow they take that and just make it like, uh, we'll utilize it sometimes, but it doesn't really matter. And even at the end of the movie, they just kind of throw it away. They just wipe their ass with it. They just say like, oh, we're not entangled anymore. It's like, oh, okay, well, okay. okay then. Makes sense. I, I, I guess so. It's like, come on. Like, it, <laughs> I don't know what went wrong here. In its current state, the movie... Only That's my favorite part about movies like this, by the way. Where there's this huge super thing that's persistent and present throughout all of the movie. And at one point at the end, it's like, oh, it's, it's gone. It, it, it's then it, forget about it. It's so long and important. It it's it's like it's gone. Yeah, it, just just don't worry about it. I I love when movies do that. Only works if you want to go and just watch some mindless action and then not listen to any of the dialogue or the story. Like that's probably the only way you can get any amount of enjoyment out of it. Because like I said, some of the action is pretty good, but. Like, that doesn't make a movie. You still need more than that. And it's not like the action is anything new to the MCU. It's all still very generic for the most part. There's nothing new here, aside from new lows that it reached with how little it actually cared. And now I have they no idea lot, what they're stop. even going to do with these characters going forward, because this movie did nothing to progress any of them except Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel, like I said, is the only yeah! component of this film that works at all. She is the only good part of this movie. Ma no, wait, when he says Miss Marvel, is does he mean Miss Marvel or Kamala King? And Miss Marvel. We need we need we need to be double short because this is super complicated. And it's not and Google's not loading for some reason? Okay, screw it. I guess we're not gonna know which Miss Marvel he means. Monica, I think because cat Kamala, Kamala King is supposed to be like Miss Marvel at some point. I'm not sure how that works even. Could have been great here. I think WandaVision was building up to Monica being a very strong and interesting character. But yeah, this yeah, movie sure. just ruined it. They didn't let her do anything until the very end. I won't spoil that, but at the very end she becomes the most important character. Pretty much out of nowhere. Because up until then, she didn't get to do anything. Like, they didn't develop her or, or even nice. try. And it's... It's such a shame. And I don't know what the fuck they're going to do with Nick Fury going forward. Maybe they'll try and explain away his behavior here as him being some kind of variant from an alternate universe or something that got fucking slapped into this movie. No, 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 no. Obviously, that's not happening. Nick Fury's fine. What are you... Th what, what, what you talking about? He did good. He... That's... That, that's good old Nicky boy. You know, the one that's... I got scraped out by a cat. That, that, it's, it's fine. Makes because I, I don't know what the fuck their plan is. They turned him into comic relief. Purely just comic relief and nothing else. Which is... What, did you want? Did you honestly think a man is gonna allow to not be comic relief in the age of the she-hero? She oh, such old and primitive sexist ways. No, wait, m misogynistic ways. Well, one of the Pick one. Okay? Such a wild decision. Anyway... Plugging the Marvels into the moist meter, I'm going to have to give it like a 25%. Today. It, it cool. is the messiest MCU movie that has been made. I think I can comfortably say that. Just... Okay, I, I, okay, okay, shut up, Charlie, you did your job. Anyway, that was Moist Critical Penguin's Charlie Z, or the guy who, you know, does things with long hair. Anyway, this was Quizzer Said Said. Thanks for watching, subscribe, I have the already, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.